All right, so if you uh, get into metalworking, um, the natural progression kind of is that you're going to want to make cleaner cuts and start doing more intricate cuts in metal. And if you're like me, well, you should get yourself checked out, but anyways, that's another story. But if you're like me, you probably looked at a lot of videos on plasma cutting. And you may have watched some CNC plasma cutting kind of stuff on YouTube. And they're really producing some amazing stuff with those machines. Well, that might lead you to buy a plasma cutter. Uh, this isn't a video on plasma cutter safety or on which one to buy or anything like that. But uh, this is a video about stepping your plasma cutter up to another level that you can't do without some kind of guidance uh, for the cutter itself. Now, a CNC system is not cheap. You can build your own, yes, but it's not necessarily something everyone wants to get into or has space to get into. So what I've gotten into is making plasma cutter templates out of wood. Um, I have a whole pile of them here in front of me over the years that I've uh, done. Uh, just throw you a few examples here, like this is a violin body for an art piece thing I did. Anything from uh, teeth to a backhoe bucket. Uh, pieces of my screwdriver vehicle here. Uh, numbers. Sometimes I'll even just use it to cut a straight edge by running the cutter along there. So I'm just going to show you a few of the ins and outs on how I use these templates and how they're most effectively used and uh, hopefully that can help you make some cleaner cuts that you can't do without this kind of system. My material of choice for making these templates is quarter inch MDF. So it's uh, really easy to work with, it's fairly strong and it's quite easy to get a nice straight edge on and keep smooth and really easy to cut with the jigsaw. Nice and easy to get your uh, cutter to run around. I just pick up, uh, usually I just buy, uh, I don't even buy 4x8 sheets, I usually buy 2x4 foot sheets uh, at just your hardware store. Super cheap stuff. Not worried about if you mess up a cut on it or something like that. And uh, try not to throw away little scraps because even something like this, great straight edge or you never know when you're going to reuse a piece for a different curve or something like that. But uh, stuff's really great. You could go with half inch uh, if that suits your plasma cutter the way it runs a little better. This works out nicely for mine at a quarter. Well, every um, torch is going to be a little bit different. But one of the first things you have to figure out if you're going to try and use wood templates is where you want to run the template on. So the cutting from this torch comes right from the center of the torch in that little hole. And when I run a template, I run my template against the side of this cutting tip. So you can see here that the distance from the template to the actual cut is very important. So I've measured that on this style of torch, which happens to be a Miller uh, plasma cutter. But it ends up being, on this one, about 3 sixteenths of an inch. So anytime I'm building a template, I have to take that into account. So for instance, on this uh, fender base head uh, stock here, I've made the template 3 sixteenths of an inch smaller than it needs to be because when I run this cutter around the template as a guide, it's going to actually make it 3 sixteenths of an inch bigger. Now the same thing is going to happen if, say, I'm doing this fish hook that I use on some of my wood stoves. When I run my plasma cutter along the inside of this template, it's going to end up being 3 sixteenths of an inch smaller than the template. So you have to really take into consideration whether you're running on the inside or the outside of your template. Another important thing to consider when you're building your template is whether you're going to make a template that runs an inside type template, or perhaps you're going to do uh, something like this which would be an outside type template. And there's going to be a big difference in how your cut turns out. So as the cutter runs around the outside of this template and you hit any kind of corner, it's going to make a radius around there of the same as your uh, cutoff, standoff distance on your plasma cutter. So as I come up to here and I make my cut around this corner, it's going to make a 3 16 radius in the steel here as opposed to a sharp edge. 
So uh, depending on what you're building, you're going to want to take that into consideration. On this template, it didn't matter because I don't mind having radiuses along here because it's a fairly curvy piece. Um, something like this, where it's uh, supposed to be a fish hook and it's supposed to be sharp, I did an inside template because as I come down to the bottom of the hook here, the tip's going to stop and then go directly up again. Well, that's going to give me a nice sharp pointed hook. If I had done this on the reverse, the hook would have been rounded on the tip. So it's something you kind of got to think about and you got to get used to thinking about when you're making the templates. Well, I hope that you found that useful. Uh, a couple little tips in there for you. I mean, you can definitely go as intricate or as simple as you want with these templates, but they really will help you get it to the next level. Um, anyways, thanks for watching. Uh, please subscribe to my channel, Redneck79, and I'll see you soon.